this goodness relentless, always seeking us. This goodness that we call love uh, constantly outpoured, finding us when we most needed, oh, incessant in its healing and wholeness and new life, hard-headed about our possibility and imagination, oh, this goodness visiting us, especially when we're in the midst of struggle and despair and hopelessness, this this goodness that we called love, that we called God constantly at us. And that's a gift. It's a gift that we've been given, and it, it's a gift that we need, and, 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 then, and then we encounter it, and it transforms us. See, that encounter transforms us. It changes us. It does something deep within us. He brings that which we need, that, that, that encounter with that goodness, and, and not just once in our lives, but, but constantly in our lives. If we pay attention, that, that, that incessant goodness is after us, ready, able. It's a gift, a gift that we need and a gift that the world needs. This is why often, though we churchify it, we, we invite you not just to embrace that goodness and that grace and that mercy and that forgiveness, to embrace that love. We also invite you to allow that love <laughs> to make you whole again, to bring healing to you again. In, 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 in a perfect world, then, that, then we, over time, as we encounter this love, this God, as we encounter Jesus over and over again, the, the more encounters, the more like Jesus we become in the world. We radiating that love, that healing, that forgiveness, that goodness. We, this, we radiating this wisdom that James speaks to us about today. But just like in classic James form, I mean, this letter has been disputed in the church for 2,000 years, partially because it invites us to, to the kind of grace that, that has a, a fruit. It invites us to be co-participants with divine life in this movements of grace. So, so James gives us a pathway for what it looks like to live into this goodness, into this love. What does love look like put into action? And it gives us three things for us to think about together. If we've had this encounter, and, and we, we have been made whole by that encounter each and every time, then, then how are we to behave in the world? And I cannot think of a better set of pieces of wisdom for us in September of 2024 than the three things that James invites us into. The first one, very difficult for a person who makes their living talking. <laughs> Being quick to listen. Oh, being quick to listen. Now, again, some of us are naturally gifted at listening, and so God bless you if you are. Thank you. Some of us, though, have to nurture it. Let's say it that way. And, and today, when there's so much chatter, what an important moment for us to practice the art of listening. Sociologists tell us that one of the reasons why there's so much 
kind of fragmentation in our civic life, it's because we encounter the other with a gazillion assumptions and we're not listening to each other anymore. In other words, we think we know what the person coming at us is going to say. And we make all sorts of assumptions. As the person approaches us, or we see their Facebook profile, or we see a picture they post on Instagram, or, or we encounter them in the workplace, we already, by the moment they turn towards us, we've already made a gazillion assumptions about who, what's going to happen there. And I will not surprise you to let you know that about 75% of the time, those assumptions are wrong. Because all of us are complex human beings. And so being quick to listen is a posture of openness for the humanity of that other. It's, it's knowing that there's an opportunity in that moment for the divine life to shine, for, for the image of God in them and the image of God in you to have an opportunity there. And that even when that other human being is saying some really difficult things, being quick to listen means that we pause just for a moment. Easing our own anxieties, prejudices, stereotypes, need to be right, so that we can listen in. Just a moment. Sometimes it is that listening that prepares us for the second important marker in this life of ours. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Oh, I like fast to speak. I prefer that. Um, the, 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 the desire to jump at it, uh, uh, the desire to correct, uh, the desire to make sure that, that we have the upper hand. A few weeks, uh, I guess this past week, I was, uh, I'm, okay, so I made a mistake. You know, I, I normally try to just be all about rainbows, rainbows and unicorns on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Kittens, puppies. But we had such an exciting story that the Journal Star had of us partnering with La, Las Abejitas Bilingual Education Center. So I was just excited about this partnership, and I was so grateful that the newspaper decided to talk about that good news. I think it's awesome, right? I love that the partner, I love the, that's bilingual. So I made a mistake. I went to the Journal Star Facebook page, and I went to the comment section. Don't do it. Now, I'll have to also admit that there were a hundred amazing comments. But get, guess which comments caught my attention? The three, and I counted them, the three super negative comments. And your pastor almost loses his Jesus for a moment. And I got my typing hands ready. <laughs> Quick to speak. I wanted to set some things straight in the comment section of the Facebook page. It was unfortunate that I was preaching on being slow to speak today. <laughs> the Holy Spirit nurturing my soul, putting a healing balm on my hands. So I just turned it off and walked away. It is easy to be quick to speak. But I have a hunch that in this season of our life together, we must be much more thoughtful. That doesn't mean that we remain silent to the injustices and the pain and the hurts of our neighbor. But there's power in slowing down just a little bit and joining together for a much more thoughtful 
responds. I wish James would have stopped there, but he didn't. Or she didn't. I don't know who wrote James. Could have been he or she. Because it's an invitation then, if we, if, if we, if we are quick to listen and slow to speak, then the third one actually is a lot easier, which is to be slow to become angry. Now, we, this seems impossible in today's world because we, we are constantly being fed things that make us angry, uh, the, the, that makes our, make our blood boil, and, and that seeks to, to get us to respond, to, to make enemy, to see uh, someone who disagrees with us as other. And so, so we're constantly within, within moments of having a stroke, constantly hypervigilant of those who are enemies to us, instead of slowing it down just for a moment. As someone reminded me last night at our 530 service, remembering that anger actually is a secondary emotion, so there's something feeding that anger, fear, hopelessness, despair. misunderstanding, miscommunication, all those things come at us and feed that anger. But if we are slow to it, we're, we're actually able to, to, to observe it from afar and asking the question, why am I being made this? What is it that has this effect on me? That's good advice for human-to-human kind of connection. It's good advice for communities. It's good advice for civic life. Beware of the fear-mongering and the anger-building. It literally makes our brains lose it, right? So it's an invitation for us to gather, to slow down enough for a moment. Hold it lightly and ask the question, how is my response going to reflect this goodness of God that we call love? Because see, here's the thing. That's all in the end that we have. If we want people to experience what we've experienced, then we got to learn how to show love. See, if you want people to encounter divine life, you realize that, that we are the witnesses to that, to that encounter. We are the witnesses to that love. We're the witnesses to that restoration. We're the witnesses to that healing. We're the witnesses to that new life. Oh, not perfectly, but we are the witnesses of it. And so if we model it for folk, then they can see Maybe for the first time they can see what it looks like to live this way, to encounter this God, to see this Jesus who's the incarnation of love. And so see, may this be our prayer in the months ahead. Slow to speak. Slow to anger, but quick to listen. The Spirit in us showing us how to love, oh, and more importantly, showing the world how to love. Oh, for Plymouth, let's show the world.